What do you do when 45 Drives reaches out to you and asks, do you want to upgrade your storage server? You reply to that email as fast as possible with heck yes and send without spell checking. I then immediately go and check for the server to arrive and then check again and then again and then again. A few days later, it magically appears on my doorstep, meticulously packaged in nondescript packaging so that no one will know that a 45 drive system is inside. I then opened it up and to my delight, I saw the most beautiful server I've ever seen. Even my wife said, Oh wow, your server looks nice. Those words will never nor ever be spoken again. The white powder coat along with this awesome faceplate was just what I needed to spice up my server rack. I really think they nailed it on the server design. And the only thing I told them was, people say I like pink and blue, and they don't like LEDs. I'm not really sure where they got that idea. I then open up a box to find lots of new enterprise hard drives and even a box with some server rails. There isn't anything 45 drives left out. From the careful packaging to the custom painted server that matches my brand, to the new enterprise drives, to the server rails, down to all of the hardware that's inside. So it didn't really happen exactly the way I just described, but pretty close. 45 Drives did reach out to me and they said they wanted to help me by giving me my very own Storinator server. They asked me what my current system is and then their storage experts came up with a custom build tailored to my needs. So I bet you're asking what hardware is inside. We'll get to that right after a message from our sponsor, Micro Center. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to a Micro Center, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs to hard drives to power supplies to memory to air and water cooling to motherboards to video cards to processors and so much more. It's your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. Micro Center has the best selection and prices whether you visit one of their 25 locations across the US or if you decide to shop online. And don't worry, if it's your first time building a PC, they have lots of helpful and knowledgeable staff that are there to help you out. And after you build your PC, show it off and submit your build to the Build Showcase in the Micro Center community. And upon approval, receive a coupon for your next Micro Center in-store purchase. Also, Micro Center has been generous enough to give a free pair of Red Dragon GS500 gaming stereo speakers to all new customers, no purchase necessary, and is available in-store only. So be sure to see the links in the description for details. This is the Stornator AV15, a 15-bay server that is perfect if you're looking for a high-performance data storage. It's a 4U top-loading server that will fit right into your server rack. It has 15 bays that can hold up to 18 terabyte drives giving you up to 270 terabytes of raw storage. It's pretty dense. <laughs> this model comes equipped with an Intel Xeon Silver 4210 that has 10 cores and 20 threads. It has a base clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz and can turbo up to 3.2 gigahertz. It supports both VTX and VTD so it's great for virtualization or any other workload you can throw at it. It also came with 120 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM which should be plenty to get me going. This this motherboard is a Supermicro X11 SPL that has just about every connection you could possibly need, including onboard IPMI, making it easy to remote into this machine no matter where I'm at and no matter which power state it's in. As far as networking goes, it comes with two gigabit ethernet ports, which for a clustered server might not be enough. So they threw in an add-on network interface that has dual 10 gigabit SFP plus interfaces. So how's that for speed? Something that you might not be able to see from the outside is the HBA. It's an LSI 9305 controller, which is capable of 12 gigabits per second. This connects to the backplane and connects all of my hard drives. They've also thrown in and tucked them away a pair of 250 gig SSDs that's just for the operating system. One last thing that you shouldn't overlook is the pair of 1200 watt power supplies. Yes, that's right, 1200 watts each. <laughs> Now I bet you're wondering why 1200 watts when you're only powering this server and up to 15 drives. Now I wondered that same thing, so I reached out to their engineers and they mentioned that these are the same zippy 1200 watt power supplies in all of their 4U servers, including the monstrous XL60 you saw in Jeff Geerling's Petabyte Pi Storinator. So it makes sense to use the same power supply for all their builds. Also, a side note, these PSU fans can be loud. 
but what do you expect from an enterprise server? I did reach out to 45 drives and ask them about this, and they're going to ship me a new power supply that is much quieter, but I'll have to sacrifice redundancy, which is fine for my rack at home. They're also sending some fans to help quiet down the server. Last but not least are the drives. They sent me seven 14 terabyte Seagate Exos Enterprise drives, giving me a raw hard drive space of 98 terabytes. These are 7200 RPM drives that are helium sealed and have great power to performance ratio and have a five year warranty if anything goes wrong. I haven't used any of these drives, so I'm excited to see how they perform. So let's load up the server. Let's open up this case and take a look inside. So here are the 15 bays that I can use to put hard drives in. One, 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 two, one, three, all the way to 115. I assume this is for the row, and if I had additional rows, they would probably have two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Actually, no, there wouldn't be five. I think there would only be four because the max is 60 and four times 15 is, is 60. But anyways, it's enough maths for now. Too much maths. You could see that the drives go in vertically and they line up all the way down there to the back plane down there. So pretty awesome. So let's load this up. So it has this metal tension little bracket right here. That's kind of nice. Let's put in this first one, line it up, put it in. That was easy. Let's grab some more and let's load her up. Let's keep going this way. Here's number two, line it up down there. Clicks in, number three, here goes four. Five. It's fit so nice and snug in there. It's awesome. Six. And here is seven. Oh, <laughs> I should pay attention. You guys didn't see that. I promise I've put drives in before. Hopefully this doesn't void my warranty. I didn't push too hard. And there is seven. Okay, so seven drives. They're each 14 terabytes each. So that gives me 98 terabytes of raw storage. Um, and I'm not sure yet about the configuration I'm gonna do for these. As you see, I have some room to grow, either for another seven drives or eight drives, or some SSDs to mix in there, or another size drive altogether. So room to grow or room for performance, depending on what I'm gonna do. So now that those are in here, let's check out the rest of the server. So don't hate me, but this is where my server is gonna sit for now. As you can see, I don't have a lot of room left and this might end up replacing my disk shelf down there, but I'll need both of these systems up at the same time so that I can migrate data. That's if I decide to do it. So anyways, it's going to balance right here. It'll be fine. But as you can see, I'm out of space. I have two of you down here. Maybe the Turing Pi is going to go in there, but I'm kind of looking for a bigger rack for my server room. So if you know of a bigger rack, let me know in the comments below. So let me plug this in really quick and then we'll remote into it and take a look. Okay, it is powered on and connected. Should be coming up and let's see how this goes. Need some more RGB. After hooking up my server and going to the IP address of one of the NICs, you see this Houston command center. Now I'm running Ubuntu LTS 2004. I'll probably upgrade to 2204, but if you saw my mishap on Twitter of me YOLOing 32 servers all at once, didn't go so well. Not Ubuntu's fault, all mine. Well, Rancher, maybe. But anyways, so on top of Ubuntu, I can install this module from 45 drives called Houston, and it's the Houston Command Center. Now, this is based on an open source product called Cockpit. And then on top of Cockpit, they built some modules specifically for a 45 drive system. But if you like the look of this, you can run and install Cockpit. But if you're running a 45 drive system, it gets better with Houston. So let's sign into here. So after signing in, you could see we have a dashboard. Now, if you're familiar with things like Webmin, it's kind of an older system, but still relevant. It's a web dashboard to administer your servers. And that's kind of what Cockpit is, but a more modern version. We can see here in the overview, you can see my CPU usage, memory usage, some system information, and some configuration information here too. And on the left, we can browse through and configure our server. If we wanted to configure networking, we can go into the network tab. We can also get some metrics or live feedback from this server right here and see some network logs. So this is super handy if you're not familiar with the CLI or wanna do things really quickly 
in a UI, you can. But let's get into the interesting part right here. Let's get into the drives right here. Now you can see here, we have an overview of our system and we actually get a disk viewer. So pretty, pretty cool. So we can see we populated disks one through seven and here are my drives. And we can click on each drive and see the serial number, see the drive slot, see the hard drive type, and even see the capacity for each one. Now, these aren't formatted yet, but they will be shortly. And we could see some additional information down here, like the hard drive temperature. We could even do this for the whole entire motherboard too, which is pretty cool. It will generate graphics for your motherboard and you can see the devices that are plugged in. For instance, we could see the RAM that was plugged in in which DIMMs are populated. I can see the CPU that's in there as well. And here's my HBA with the model and it's saying that it's an 8X PCI Express 3 16X, and it's in this slot right here. And if I were to populate other devices, I would see those as well, or populate more drives on this SATA controller, I would see those too. And don't be confused, this isn't IPMI, this is actually a service running on top of Ubuntu that gives me this information. I still have IPMI if something goes wrong, but this is super nice to be able to see this without going into IPMI, right, from a web browser. We can see more information about my system. So it's a 45 drives, it's the A15 Enhanced S, see models, serial number, and see more information about it. We could navigate the file system here if I had one set up, set up file sharing, set up users, even run benchmarks and get support and even run software updates here if we wanted to as well. But let's set up a dry pool really quick in ZFS. Oh, and it looks like I have some updates, so let's just install all updates while we're doing other things. Let's configure a dry pool really quick in ZFS to see how easy it is. So let's create a storage pool. Let's name this pool zero, and then we can choose our RAID type I'm actually gonna choose RAID Z2 for now. Then we can select which disks we want to be in this pool, select them all. So there's all seven. We can change the sector size or the record size. I'm gonna turn that off. If we want deduplication, on or off. And then this right here, refresh servation. I don't know if that's a word. I don't know if that's a typo or just a term I don't understand. So let me check that really quick. Okay, so I just learned what a refreshers, <laughs> I can't even say the word, refreshization. Am I saying that right? I'm sorry, I'm not a ZFS expert, but it looks like that this is reserved storage space that doesn't get consumed when you create a pool and it doesn't get consumed by snapshots or anything else. So a reservation? I don't know, if you have a better explanation, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, so we can set compression if we want, automatically expand, automatic trim, we're not gonna set any of that, automatically replace drives, I'm not gonna touch that right now, I see Linux and forcefully create storage pool, which I don't need to do. So let's create our storage pool really quick. And it looks like our storage pool is created. Here it is, pool zero, it's online. The size is 89 terabytes, allocated is 1.62 megabytes, and free is 89 terabytes. So we're doing pretty good here. <laughs> so super simple to manage ZFS here. And now that we have a ZFS pool, we can actually look at our 45 drive disks section and we can see this ZFS animation here. So all of the drives are online, they're all part of this pool and they are all green, so they're all good. And if we wanted to, we could create virtual machines here too because it supports virtualization. But we're not gonna get into that yet because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this server. With my system running and tested, I'll now need to decide a path forward for the server. Does it replace my disk shelf? Does it replace TrueNAS? Do I run Proxmox on it with Ceph? I'm not sure yet, but be sure you're subscribed to see what's next for the Storinator. And a huge thank you to everyone at 45 Drives this server turned out nicer than I ever could have imagined, so thank you so much. And to all of you out there, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Another thing that I've been working on too, 100 Days of Home Lab, is for me, it's getting close. I think I'm on day 84 today, which is, is pretty awesome. I've sent a tweet every day <laughs> and I've been working on it every day and I'm, I'm getting close. I'm what, 16 days away from 100. I'm gonna keep going.